What up, y'all? Uh, we playing a scary game today. It's called Midnight Evil. Oh my god! I'm, I'm, I only do this for y'all. Oh, what? Yo, it look like my shit move. I only do this for y'all. Literally, only do this for y'all. I don't play scary games in my free time. So. We, we just gonna get into it, bro. My, my my boy told me a little bit about this game. You gotta read a book, and then like if you look up, bro, you gotta read a book. But while you read it, you hear gremlins in the closet. <sighs> God, bro. Come on, man. Look, we gonna finish this game. I'm, I'm, well, at least I'm gonna try to finish the game. Let's, let's get into it. All right, y'all. So I try to get my thing, my game, to where I can speak into the mic. You know, as the story unfolds, but for some reason, I can't get it to work. So I'm gonna do it on listening mode. All right, Wim Crinkle was fast asleep. Come on, bro. As he climbed the stairs, he felt something. He had never seen his chest before. Just an innocent book. Tonight, his life would change forever. Oh no. Nathan Sanders presents Midnight Evil. All right. All right, I'm gonna walk around. Okay, bet, 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 okay. All right. Long? Set. Whoa. Hold on, hold on, wait, wait. Long before the first humans stood upright and took their place in the world, there was a beautiful land that was ruled by what many would come to call the Fae. These ancient beings were worshipped. These ancient beings were worshipped by mankind, but they were also feared. Humans were right to be afraid. For there were many different creatures that lived in the darkness, watching us, waiting. Most were harmless enough, amusing themselves by causing mischief and playing pranks on humans that crossed their paths. However, some had, however, some had more sinister intentions. The Erkling, for example, have developed a liking for the taste of human children. These monsters are small, unnaturally fast, and impossible to kill. It was an unlucky tragedy for my people that we decided to build our village here, right in the middle of the Erkling's territory. We have lost so many of our children over this past year, there aren't enough tears in this world to weep for their loss. Hell nah. Hell nah. The Germinator. The Germinator, bro. The Germinator. <laughs> Saws. Oh my God, bro. Thankfully though, my grandmother taught me well in the ways of my druid ancestors. I may not be able to kill the little beasts, but I was able to work out a spell that binds them to this book. I can only hide it and pray that it never falls into the hands of a child. If you are reading this, Know that I'm truly sorry for the demons that have now been passed on to you. Open That's the fucking crazy. Awaken them, and I'm sure they will be ravenously hungry. Once the book is opened, you must read it out loud from beginning to end, in order to. See, my. St 
That dresser was not open just now, man. That dresser was not open, bro. You know, it was not open. We Once just gonna, we just gonna open, ignore that. You must read it out loud from beginning to end in order to return them to their magical prison. Be watchful. They only attack if you don't see them coming. Most importantly, once you finish this book, keep it hidden so that no one ever opens it again. WIGSFM 98.7 Game Talk. Here's the thing. God damn, did I have to listen to that whole thing? Little Maggie O'Brien was the first. The children had been playing in Hogan's Forest when they all heard a noise. Sensing no danger because there were so many of them, twelve children in all decided to investigate the source of the strange sound. Bro, why he jump on me? Why did he just? All right, bro. All right, nah. All right, bro. All right, bro. All right, bro. All right. As they all searched high and low, <clears throat> they soon realized that Maggie. As they all searched high and low, they soon realized that Maggie was missing. Frantically, they began searching for their friend. She was a. She was a small girl who loved to play hide and seek. <laughs> What am I supposed to do? Bro, my fucking chest, man. I swear to God, bro. My damn muscle, my chest hurt, bro. And I'm sweating. God damn, bro. What the fuck am I supposed to do, man? Oh, my God. She was a small girl who loved to play hide and seek. Her big brother, Colin, insisted that she was probably hiding. Like, what am I supposed to do? Click on it? Like. Her... What? 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 Her big brother, Colin, insisted that she was probably hiding somewhere, safe and giggling to herself as she watched everyone's... Her big brother... Like, bro, what am I supposed to do? What, what, like, what am I supposed to do? Like, there's no... Her big brother... Read! What are you doing? Her big brother, Colin, insisted that she was probably hiding somewhere, safe and giggling to herself as she watched everyone search for her. The sun sank low in the sky and the forest grew dark. The children, frustrated and panicked, ran back to the village to alert their parents that little Maggie was nowhere to be found. That's when everyone lit torches and spread out through the woods, calling her name. The little girl's mother sobbed desperately as we all inspected every corner of those woods in hopes of finding her. Her brother kept searching, tears streaming down his cheeks. I'm her big brother. I'm her big brother. He said, rubbing his eyes. I'm supposed to make sure nothing happens to her. It's not your fault, Colin, I assured him. We'll find her soon, and she'll be no worse for the wear. He nodded, forced he nodded, forced a smile, and we all continued looking. The moment I heard him scream, I knew he had found her. Or rather, what was left of her, which wasn't much. Fuck out of here. I got it now, I got it, I got it. We were sure it was Mag We were sure it was Maggie because she had worn her favorite hair bow that day. Her father plucked the pink ribbon from the body and fell to his knees, wailing into the darkness. Poor Colin tried to tell us then. He said that she had been covered in what he described as little green men. The, 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 they were fat and green? He stammered. With bright glowing eyes, they were biting off bits of skin and flesh. No one believed the lad. We all attributed. <laughs> we all attributed the horrible ordeal to a hungry spot. wild animal. Of course, what else could it possibly be? Scooping up what remained of little Maggie, the townsfolk set to work preparing for her funeral. We had no idea the horrors that lay ahead. I thought to myself how strange her wounds looked. I couldn't help but think back. 
I couldn't help but think back to what Colin had said about the little green men. It made it made me think of the stories my grandmother used to tell me. She said that our druid ancestors spoke of tiny creatures that lived long ago in the swamps and marshes surrounding our lands. The Erklings, she called them. There were three tribes, each being their own breed of evil. One tribe, I recall, she said were green and fat. They were Weird. 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 They would lure children away from safety and feast on their flesh. We didn't live near any We didn't live near any swamps. Surely the boy's mind was playing tricks on him. Besides, the Erklings weren't real. They couldn't OH SHIT! <laughs> Get the hell, yo. They, they couldn't be. Maggie O'Brien's funeral was just what anyone would expect. Everyone did their best to comfort the grieving parents. Colin kept to himself. Everyone assumed it was because he blamed himself. After his sister had been laid to rest, I came to him to ask him how he was doing. He looked, he looked up at me, eyes red from either crying, lack of sleep, or a combination of the two, and said, I really saw them, the little green monsters. My heart ached as I put my arms around the boy. I Move, 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 get I move, kept telling myself move. that seeing his little sister in pieces couldn't have been easy for him. He was just in shock. The stories of the Erklings were only told to scare children into doing what they were told. That was all. The first thing my grandmother told me about the Erklings was that there were three tribes. The green ones had round bellies and piercing blue eyes. Move, oh, move, okay. move, move. Try to listen to the story, bro. She said they could be heard move. if you walked deep in the swamp at night. Move, move, move. They would laugh and sing as they danced around their tiny campfires, which would appear only as tiny flickering lights through the trees. They were the least lethal of the three tribes, but every bit as evil. The red ones were more temperamental and even faster than their green cousins. Oh, hell nah. We got they didn't sing or dance around campfires and their celebrations were a bit more gruesome. They prefer to eat children from the inside out. It was even thought by some that they were only red because they were stained by the blood of their victims. Fiery red, bristle-like hair sprouted from the tops of their heads. Fiery red. Bristle-like hair sprouted from the tops of their heads, and their glowing yellow eyes seemed cold and calculating. The pale Erklings were in another class altogether. They had white skin and wild, untamed blue hair that flowed out in every direction. The most unsettling thing about them was that they had no eyes at all, yet they somehow were the most keen and efficient killers of the three. Grandmother said that their long, wiry hair could somehow sense the presence and locations of children. There were some things that all three tribes had in common. Erklings preferred to eat after midnight and would only attack if the child didn't make direct eye contact with them. I reassured myself that the O'Brien girl being attacked I reassured myself that the O'Brien girl being attacked barely after sunset meant that she had to have been the victim of a wild animal attack. Move, move. <laughs> Try to read the damn the book, man. You ain't, you, ain't, you, ain't, you ain't even a main character no more, bro. I'm not worried about you. I'm worried about the other ones. What, what is this? A few of the men in the village came together to hunt down the beast that killed the girl. They came back. 
They came back two days later, carrying the carcass of a large wolf. The whole village breathed a sigh of relief, and a big celebration was held. The only one besides myself that remained anxious was Colin. Looking at, oh, looking at his face that night, I knew that he believed the creatures that killed Maggie were still out there, waiting. He was right. W-I-G-S-F-M 98.7 Alright, we back, alright. You're, you're the only one that doesn't look at me like I'm crazy. I swallowed hard, started to deny it, but the words caught in my throat and as much as I tried, I couldn't lie. Listen, I put my hands on his shoulders. I don't think you're crazy, but we need to be sure of what we're dealing with before we spark a full-blown panic. Oh my god. Oh shit. The two of them. Oh my. Oh! Three, three. All right, all right, all right, all right. Okay, all right. All right, all right. That was, that's not fair, bro. That's three. That's three. I'm sweating, bro. I'm sweating on my head right now. Tell me exactly what happened. Colin took a deep breath, working up his nerve. It was... Oh, shit. It was so dark, but I had a good torch. Bro, I should look at my phone. I called her name over and over. She didn't answer. Then I heard something. It sounded like... It sounded like chewing. I took a few more steps and I saw her laying there. All over her were these fat little green monsters. They had no... Move, 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 move. There's another one's a mercy. Yep, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm on ya, I'm on ya, I'm on ya. I'm on ya. I'm on ya. They had mouthfuls of pointy teeth that looked like needles and massive clawed hands. Just then a twig snapped under my foot and they all stopped what they were doing and looked right at me. That's when I screamed and they scattered. They were gone before any They were gone before any of the grown ups got to me. His eyes filled with tears at the memory. Please tell me what they are. He was no He was no more than eleven or twelve, having just lost his sister and now his friend. <laughs> Move, 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 move. Get out of here, bro. No one had believed him when he tried to tell us before. It couldn't have been easy, but he opened up to me. I felt it only right that I tell him what I knew. We sat together by the bonfire late into the night, and I told him all the old stories. Unfortunately, the one thing that my grandmother hadn't mentioned was how to get rid of them. Looking into the flames, I got an idea. I knew that. Move. Oh, it's three. Oh, alright. Move, 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 move. Move. Where the other one at? Where's the other one? Oh, why get out of my face? Nah. Move. 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 I knew that most unholy creatures were repelled by fire. Well. Colin folded his arms. You just have to test what happens to an earthling when it's on fire. Lava lamp. Get I'm about to get fired from a lava lamp. Ain't no way. Colin wanted to tell his friends about the Erklings, but I begged him to keep it a secret. If any if anyone knew that my grandmother had passed down her druidic teachings, it would only take one person to. If anyone knew that my grandmother had passed down her druidic teachings, it would only take one person to scream, witch. Bro, I hear something. If anyone knew that my grandmother had passed down her druidic teachings, it would only take one person to scream, witch, and I would be as good as dead. He, ag he agreed and kept my secret. I mixed a potion that would catch fire when touched by the tiniest flame. Surely. Move, 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 move. Where are you at? We wet, we wet. Get out, get out. Get out of here, please. Please, please. All right, that's all. All right. Surely this would send it screaming to the underworld. He sat quietly in his bed and waited, knowing he mustn't look them in the eye. He must let it attack, for this would be the only way to get close to it. Move. Oh. <laughs> 
Just after the stroke of midnight, he began to hear them chuckling and shuffling around in the dark. Clutching the potion bottle, hands trembling, he lowered his gaze and braced himself. Sure enough, one of them leapt from his bookshelf and sank its teeth into the flesh of his arm. Better not. <laughs> Y'all better not. Sure enough, one of them leapt from his bookshelf and sank its teeth into the flesh of his arm. Oh, yeah. Move, 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 move. Oh, shit. All right. What other one that? Yep. Get out of here, bro. He screamed and unstopped the bottle, emptying the contents over the green Urkling. The put. It tore a tiny round chunk from his arm and gulped it down just as Colin shoved a candle right into its face. It lit up like a torch and made a horrific high-pitched scream as it ran around the room trying to put itself out. The, cur the curtains caught fire as four more Urklings sprung out from their hiding places. Colin ran outside, screaming and cradling his blood-soaked arm. His <laughs> parents soon joined him outside in a panic, trying to figure out what had happened. Just then, a tiny fireball came racing through the doorway and zigzagged towards the woods. Oh. Bro, I can't even, it's my hair, man. I grabbed an empty glass jar from my cupboard and ran after it. The jar made a thunk sound as it landed over the flaming Urkling and the fire quickly went out. To my horror, the thing wasn't dead. It didn't even look like it was dying. So Though blackened from the being set ablaze, it was just as spunky as ever. I, I quickly scooped up the jar and screwed the lid on. As I made my way back, some of the villagers were trying to put out the fire inside the house, and others were tending to Colin's arm, telling him that it must have been a rat. Oh my god. Move, 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 oh, move, 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 move. I've never seen a rat quite like this, I shouted, and held the jar up high so everyone could see. <laughs> The instant they all looked in my direction. This is what I was scared of when I, when I was little, bro. I used to think stuff was going to pop up out of nowhere, bro. I would, I would hate to see this type of stuff. The instant they all looked in my direction, their jaws dropped open. And Colin's face lit up for the first time since he'd lost his sister. He, <laughs> he knew everyone finally saw that he had been telling the truth all along and they all felt terribly ashamed for not believing him in the first place. Unfortunately, the joy of this small victory was short-lived, for over the next three days we tried every method we could think of to kill the little wretch, but no matter what horrific thing we did, it wouldn't die. Move. 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 You're not. You better just quit. Just quit. Just quit. W-I-G-S-F-M-A-N-A-N-A-N-A-N-A-N-A-N-A-N-A-N-A-N-A-N-A-N-A-N-A-N-A-N-A-N-A-N-A-N-A-N-A-N-A-N-A-N-A-N-
between the stroke of midnight and the first light of dawn, they became absolutely ravenous. It appeared that there was nothing else we could do. As much as I hated the thought of disturbing my grandmother, I knew that she was the only one that might be able to give me any insight as to how I could get rid of them. Oh, whoa, hold on, wait, whoa, hold on. Wait a minute, wait a minute. That's the white one. I asked. I asked Colin to meet me in secret at her grave. I brought grandmother's old spirit board with me, which had every letter of the alphabet on it. Colin and I placed a small glass cup upside down in the center of the board and waited. The idea was that her spirit would guide the cup to the letters and in doing so, spell out a message to me. Grandmother? I spoke aloud. I really Move. Whoa! Hey! It's dark outside now. I'm about to cut off the lights. This is as dark as it's gonna get. First, we tried drowning it. In the way. Oh my God, man! Bro, I touched it. I poked at it, man. I really need your help. Speak to us. Your magic is the only thing that can save these children. Hey! Hey! Yeah, yeah! We waited, but we were met with only silence. Please, grandmother! I pleaded. I don't know what to do. Move. What's up, buddy? I would do anything to save these children, anything. Just tell me what to do, please. I begged her. I begged her. I begged her to answer me. But the glass didn't move, and no answer would come from the spirit board that night. As we snuck back to the village, we were greeted with the news of three more deaths. Move, move. You rap. Right. Where other one at? Where other one at? Yeah, move, 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 move. It's another one. It's another one. Yep, move, move, move. I come in the fours now, huh? I see. I see, I come in the fours now. The widow Adams had fallen asleep guarding her three little ones. She always worked so hard, toiling in the fields from dawn until dusk, to make sure her family was fed. After she lost her husband to sickness, she was the only caretaker for her children. Now they were gone too, and she was truly alone. As I lay in my bed crying, I felt responsible for what was happening. I hadn't paid much attention as a child when my grandmother tried to teach me the old ways. If I had been a better student, I could have spared my people so much misery and death. Eventually, I drifted off to sleep. It was only then that my grandmother finally came to me in a dream and told me what I must do if I wanted to rid the village of the Erklings once and for all, but their imprisonment would come at a terrible price. Move! 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 Right, my door closed now. All right, good, 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 good. Let's go. I found myself walking through the dark forest. Bro, I'm I'm trying to look at the time, like how much time I was recording, and then this stuff is be happening. The damp earth under my bare feet felt cool and mossy. In the distance, I could hear drums. A breath. Move. 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 A bright light was shining through the trees. I can move. I continued cautiously, unsure of what to expect when I entered the clearing. As I came closer, I could see people dancing around the fire. A 
the beautiful woman stood with her hands outstretched towards the sky. It Move! It took a moment before I recognized her. Grandmother? Is that you? Hello, dear. I heard your call, but I could not come to you. I had to wait until you fell asleep to bring you here. What is this place? I asked, looking around. This is... This is where all of our people go when their time on Earth ends. Can I stay here with you? No, my darling. I'm afraid you can't. I could see the sorrow in her eyes as she put a sympathetic hand on my cheek. In fact, if you really mean to imprison all the Earthlings, you will never be allowed to take your place here. <laughs> Could have sworn it was another one, bro. Could have sworn it was another one. My heart sank like a stone. What do you mean? If you wish to trap them, your immortal soul will be lost forever. Do you understand? I bit my lip as I thought of Maggie, Jacob, and the three Adams children. I couldn't even imagine the horror they must have felt during their final moments. <laughs> then I pictured Colin and the other children of the village. I simply couldn't bear to let the Earthling pick them off one by one. Soon Soon we would have no children left. I could Move, move, move. I couldn't let that happen no matter the cost. <laughs> Tell me what I must do. My grandmother's expression grew dark as she described the ingredients to two potions. Then she, then she explained the details of the spell I would have to perform to trap them within a cursed tome forever. Move. <laughs> Bro, if y'all don't start coming out, man, I got the, Man, listen, I got Quick Draw Hall of Fame on right now, man. Stop playing with me. As she spoke, I could feel my blood run cold, and a horrible chill spread through my entire body. That's... That's another one. That's a... That's a big boy right My throat there. became so dry that I could hardly speak. I, I can't, I managed to say. No, I can't do this. I stumbled backwards, feeling sick to my stomach. You must. If you don't finish every step exactly as I say, the Earthlings will never stop. I fell to my knees and put my hands over my face. <laughs> Please, there must be another way. I don't make... Bro, come on. Can y'all stop? Please, I don't man. make the rules, my dear. I can only tell you the way things are. I sobbed pitifully, and my grandmother knelt down, putting her arms around me and holding me close. The right thing to do is rarely the easiest. Be strong. She whispered. She, wh she whispered as I woke. Be strong. As soon as... Bro, what's, what's that? I can't even see. That's not fair. 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 That's not fair, bro. I as soon see. as I opened my eyes, I began to question the dream. Did Move! <laughs> Did my grandmother's spirit really visit me, or was it just my anxious mind playing tricks on me? In my heart, I knew. <laughs> I had to cast this spell. I had to save them. Move! Move! Hey! Man. Man, I wasn't even scared right there. I got mad, but I hit him, man. In my heart, I knew. I had to cast this spell. <laughs> Bro, you gotta be kidding me. It didn't, it didn't even click on him at first. I had to save them. Move. Oh, Where the one at? Where the one at? Where the one at? Where you at? Oh, yeah, yeah, I see you. Stupid. Come on. Let's go. Let's go, man. Oh, Tori. Let's get it.
Did I just see, bro? I just seen who you going, who you going, who you going to haul into the toaster? Who you going to haul into the toaster? It's a toast busters. <laughs> Bruh, I need that. I need that. I searched I Hogan's forest for the various herbs I would need to brew two potions. I smelled the sweet perfume of the forest air and listened to the songs of the birds and insects of the woods, knowing that it would be the last time I would ever get to enjoy them. What? Once I gathered all my ingredients, I found Colin and told him that I knew how to end the Erkling's reign of darkness but that I would need his help. I didn't tell him what was about to happen. <laughs> I couldn't find the courage. Not to, not to mention, if he knew what I was about to do, he would do everything in his power to stop me. Oh my God! Wait, hold on, wait. I can't see, I can't see, I can't see, I can't see, bro. He was a good boy. Never move, 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 move. move. What other one at? What other one at? Where you at? Alright, bet. I never had the privilege of having children of my own, but if I had, I would have wanted them to be just like Colin O'Brien. Brave, honest, and kind. Together, we walked into the deepest part of Hogan's Forest. The old, the old stone ruins marked a sacred place where our ancestors used to honor the ancient woodland spirits. Twelve large rectangular stones stood in a massive circle. I, I sat my pack down and opened it up. Taking out this very book, I opened it to the first page and laid it in the center of the circle. Next, I took out the two potions, one black and one white. I gave Colin the small bottle that held the black liquid. You will need to drink this. Well he about to kill Colin. It will protect you. He frowned for a moment as he inspected the murky potion, but obediently pulled the stopper out of the bottle and drank it down. Uh. Hey! Hey! Bang! What the fuck? Ugh, that was awful. I smiled. <laughs> I smiled. Well, I don't plan on making you drink it again. I took the white potion and drank it. I took the white potion and drank it, trying not to think about the fact that it was sealing my fate. Something doesn't feel right. Colin started wobbling. <laughs> Yo, he didn't make no noise. That's crazy. I'm sorry, my boy. I said sincerely. Truly, I am. Oh yeah. Move, move, move. Another one. Yep. Who at? Move. Another one. Another one. Another one. Yep. His eyes rolled back, and he fell into a deep, dreamless sleep. When he woke, he found himself bound with rope and blindfolded. That's crazy. That is crazy. I'm killing the Colin. Black potion, you see, had three functions. It was infused with herbs that would make him first and foremost irresistible to every Urkling within a hundred miles. <laughs> But they quick, they quick. I'm, oh, you almost got, you almost got me, you almost got me, you almost got me. Almost. Secondly, it contained the binding agent that would ensnare the creatures and keep them forever trapped in a pocket dimension that could only be opened using this cursed book. <laughs> Thirdly, it incapacitated him long enough for me to finish the remaining steps of the spell. You see. While he was unconscious, I was writing this book. No, I can't write it. As I pen these final words, I can already see my skin turning white. My hair has mostly fallen out, and long blue hair is growing in. At, 
<laughs> Wait a minute, hold on. At first I thought Colin was getting bigger, but I see now that I'm slowly shrinking. My vision is fading. I can hear the others coming. Yo, he turned into a troll? I keep telling Colin not to be afraid, that it will all be over soon. After we eat him, we will all be trapped in the book. His, his screams will be the last thing I hear. <laughs> oh, hell no, this is messed up. Please forgive me, for I can never forgive myself. Yo, that's messed up. I didn't think it was going to be that bad. Cautiously approached me. Cautiously, my bad. The page was empty. Midnight Evil, created by Nathan Sanders. The end of was messed up. Then it was me hold on. Wow. Wow. That's messed. Yo, that is crazy. Everything besides the radio part. The dude on the radio was talking too long, but God damn, that was messed up. Hey, man, that was Midnight Evil. Oh. You know, I breezed through that game. I didn't even die for real. It was scary, but it wasn't as scary as I thought it was gonna be. Towards the end, it got like, I got more angry than scary because I just kept dying. I'm like, well, I, can't, I didn't keep dying, but the sounds all down was making me mad because I'll click on them and they wouldn't even disappear. But that was scary, you know? Story scary, gameplay, it was, it was, I'll give it like a, I'll give it like a six out of 10. Six out of 10, man. The story was good. But, yeah, man, that's Midnight Evil. Um, we're going to play something else next video, all right? I'm going to play, like, another scary game. I might play another scary game. I'm going to play something to where I got to actually walk. But, all right, yeah. It's your boy Lenar. I'm out. That was Midnight Evil. We beat it. We beat the game, man. Y'all not used to me beating games, but we did it today. Ah. Uh.